Hey, this is Howie with Sierra Mountain Guides. Really excited to welcome you here to the Convergence Zone, right where all of the best climbing in North America converges with one of the great stone masters of our time, Peter Croft. Uh, we live in the deepest valley in North America here, the Owens Valley, 14,000 feet on either side of our little valley. And um, it just gives you so many opportunities year round. There's probably more places to climb, more days you can climb year round here in the Owens Valley than any other place in North America. And we have Peter, who's obviously chosen to live here for a reason. He's excited to do some trips with Sierra Mountain Guides. So we're looking forward to having you out here. So in other words, you climb differently when it's slabby than when it's vertical, and that's different from when it's overhead. You use actually different body position, different foot position. And so that's what I need to find out from you is where are you coming from? So the endurance to like rope climb has been a big issue for me. I'm just <laughs> yeah. yeah well, like one good thing for you is that carryover from endurance to power is next to nothing, <laughs> but the other way around, it's significant. So in other words, if I've got tons of endurance, but can't pull a powerful boulder move like you can, I'll hang out there forever, but I still won't do the move. But with you, even if you don't have too much endurance, you'll get to a powerful move. You won't even hesitate. You'll just pull right through that before you even start to get pumped. That doesn't mean you don't you wouldn't benefit from getting endurance, but you, in a way you've kind of got a bit of a head start. Like I say, the carryover in that direction from bouldering to endurance climbing is a lot greater. And one of them is footwork. And part of using good footwork is, is you know, being able to push off your feet well, but also doing it quickly. So if, you, if you're on a climb that's at your limit and you're taking a few times to place your foot, you're kind of skipping around and you see that people do it all the time and they take maybe like a few seconds to get their foot on that tiny little edge. Okay, now you magnify that by say 30 moves. Well, all of a sudden, if you've taken something that is at your limit when you're doing your very best, it means you've fallen off that route, you, you failed on it. So being precise and getting your feet on the footholds quickly is, is a huge part of it. So what I do when I'm doing warm-ups, no matter how big the foothold is, I try to place it super precisely. And that does basically two things. One, it's like target practice. You just, the more precise you are with your feet all the time, then when you're in a, you know, when you're fighting for your life basically, and you have to stab that foot out on that micro edge, you just hit it first time because you're used to being really precise. That's just, your body in a, in a survival situation, it reverts to what it knows the most. So if you're used to using really good footwork, that's what it goes back to. Like that is like, to me, it seems like that's like the perfect kind of pitch for you to warm up on because you weren't struggling anywhere, and that's what warm up should be. It's like you're just flowing, you're just like, ah, oh, this is just so cruisy, and I'm just kind of stretching out, and it feels good. Is that's the perfect type of warm up, and it's such, it's a way more important part of of uh, your climbing day than most people think. I mean, some people kind of go, yeah, you're supposed to do a bit of a warm up and a warm down. The warm down helps a bit. But it's really, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're just like, oh, let's just get out of here. But I mean, for one thing, hiking out of the gorge, that's going to, you know, that'll warm you down a bit. But the warm down, it, what it really does, it just flushes out a bit of the lactic acid and gets the blood moving around so that you recover maybe a bit quicker. But the thing that's really going to prevent you from getting injured, probably more than anything, is a proper warm-up. You still have a breakthrough at 58. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a absolutely. You, you know, like he here in the States, climbing is still thought of as, a as an extreme sport. You go over to Europe and it's just normal to see people out that are, you know, 10 years older than you out in the crags and, and climbing hard. So, yeah, absolutely. There's one of the most famous climbers in uh, Yosemite history, um, John Salise. He started in his mid 40s. I mean, the Salisbury Wall was named after him. He did all kinds of first ascents there and was, you know, probably 
the leading climber of his day in Yosemite. So, you know, yeah, I wish I had started when I was three, but, you know, we do what we can. My name is Bruce, and uh, Bruce Lella, and uh, I've been living in the Eastern Shire for a long time now. And I've climbed a lot with a lot of very good climbers here. Uh, John Packer was a very good friend. Peter Croft was a very good friend. And uh, I've had the privilege to climb with a lot of good climbers. And this video is actually a testimonial to Peter's personality and climbing ability. Um, he is top shelf. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Hope this gives you a sense of what it's like to come climbing with Peter Croft here in the Owens Valley. Amazing place. And um, please give us a call. 760-648-1122 or on our website www.sierramtnguides.com. Hope to see you on the rock.